as we just lifted our hands up and we could, we could feel your presence here. We could just take your hand and that your amazing presence is here. Lord, I thank you that your goodness is so amazing. Your goodness is, is present in all of our lives from the start of the service. We just heard about the testimonies we have because of you, Lord, because of your presence in our life, because of your goodness that's just following us wherever we go. No matter the circumstances, no matter the, what the world gives, gives us, your goodness is following us. And I choose here today to lay myself down to be transformed by you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that we can just call on unto you and just lift up our hands and just touch you. Because you are here, right here, right now. I thank you for that, in Jesus' name. Amen. I just really feel that the Lord is speaking today to people who feel that you don't deserve God's goodness over your life. And that there's a lot of shame and, and things from your past that you feel disqualifies you from the goodness of God. And so you're very content to just sit and wallow in whatever circumstances you find yourself in because you feel, I kind of deserve this. I kind of deserve to be here because of the choices that I've made. And I just want to encourage you this morning, you know, if you have the boldness just to, and we, as every eye is just closed, we just want to pray with you so that you can know that yes you don't deserve the goodness of God but nobody in this room does and that's why Jesus died because he wanted to show you that you deserve the best that God has to offer which is the love of his son can we just pray if, if, I, if this word was for you, please be bold and just reach out and take the goodness of God. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that nothing that we've lived surprised you at any point. Because you knew the depth of human depravity when you went to that cross. But there was something on the other side of the cross that drew you through the pain. There was something that drew you through the agony and it was wholeness. It was what you saw what was going to happen. You saw that you were going to be an access point to the goodness of God to those who could never earn it. And Father, I just thank you in this moment that you speak goodness and kindness and joy and restoration to every heart that thinks I don't deserve it, Lord, and that they will say, yes, I don't, but Jesus did it. Jesus deserved it. And Jesus deserves the fruit of his travail by showing his goodness over my life because I don't deserve it. But he deserves to see the fruit of his travail. He deserves to see the goodness of the Father manifest in my life. He deserves to see me receive the wholeness that Jesus paid for. He deserves to see the fruit of his travail. And part of that is just me experiencing his goodness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. And uh, in that prayer, just know that you are set free. Just come and, and receive the word of God and be transformed forever. Don't ever look back because know that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross. That he paid a full price for you and that you are worthy because Jesus is worthy. Praise the Lord. Thank you, worship team. You guys were amazing. And uh, all glory to the Holy Spirit that moved here. That is, 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 um, is changing us and transforming us every day. So all glory to our King. So um, if anybody didn't know what our theme is this year. Hey, I've got a bolt patch again. Um, our theme for this year is transformed. And uh, I think a lot of people is uh, looking transformed again. That slideshow, I saw that again and again and again. We're going to keep on pre preaching it until we're going to be transformed, until Benoni is transformed, until to the end of the world is transformed. So all of us need to be transformed. And uh, I've got a shocking news for you. 
Today is the 1st of March. Okay, this year is flying. And in your life, oh, in, in this last two months of 2020, if you look back at your life, what has been transformed in your life? And every now and again, we have to challenge one another just to look at our lives and just make sure that our plans that we had in the beginning of um, January, we were committed when you heard the theme transformed, that I want to be transformed in this way. Is, has that been fulfilled? Has that been transformed in your life? And if it's not, why not? So let's make sure that the theme and the Word of God that the Lord has spoke to every one of us in our lives, let's make the choices to be transformed every day. So how do we do it? So one of the keys that the tools that we can use is to ask. And uh, maybe Wesley, how do we ask? How do we ask God? How do we, how do we ask Him? You can stand up and shout because I don't know where's the mic. Can I grab one of your... Uh, no, it's, no, it's you, um, you only, you're, now, you, no, you're only up later. I'm going to call you now. Um, uh, yo, how, do, how would you ask? How do we ask? Okay, so that's through prayer. Praise the Lord. So, so how do we ask to be transformed? We need to pray more. Is that a deal? So the first thing is, if you want to be transformed... Let's pray more. But we, we've got a, a certain doctor in the Bible, and his name is Luke, and the uh, other disciple, Matthew. And I want to ask uh, uh, Dr. Nadia, Luke, and uh, Angus, Angus, Matthew, um, to just come and quickly join me, because the, the answer is in um, Matthew 7, verse 7 and 8, and Luke 11, verse 9 to 13. Matthew 7, verse 7. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Amen. Amen. And verse 8. For everyone that asked, receive it. And he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. That's from the King James Version. Thank you very much. That was high English, but so powerful. Really appreciate. And then, what did uh, Luke, Luke, yes, please, 11, 9 to 13. Luke 11, verse 9. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock, the do knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Of which, which of you fathers, if your son asks a fish, you will give him a snake instead? If so, if he asks for an egg, you will give him a scorpion. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your father in heaven give the holy spirit to those who ask him thank you very much as we can hear here is just confirmation about the goodness of god but the thing is we need to learn to ask we need to learn to ask about the goodness of god and like as he said we need to ask through prayer that's why the first part that we need to ask through is through prayer. And just a bit of background, in, in Matthew 7 and um, Luke 11, the background is there, it's about a, it started off the Sermon in, in, on the Mount, and that's the most studied, most preached, most transform, transformed scripture verses with, with, uh, or well-known um, passages or, or messages that the uh, Lord Jesus Christ preached. So we need to, to take that and use that so that we can have a transformed life. And through this area, in that section of Matthew 7, it was talking about building your house on the rock. And I ask you, when you are transformed, are you building on the sand or are you building on the rock? Well, a lot of times we choose here to build on the rock, but then we go out, but we're still building, but we're building on the sand. 
So the choices we made here, the choices we made in January, we need to keep on building on the rock. Keep on moving in, in the same, uh, on this background, it's also about the, the good friend or the persistent friend. Or the passage we just read is about a persistent friend that went to, the, to go and ask his friend, you know, um, give us some bread. And he kept on asking and kept on asking. And as we're going to, when we carry on, we're going to see the difference in, in prayer and the boldness, like we saw in Matthew 7, how we should go, go and ask a father. And as we move, move along, we, we, we can look at the Beatitudes and just know that, that God wants to transform our lives. But it's our choice. It's our will. How will we, will, and what will we build it on? And the Lord Jesus also told the parables there about uh, um, the seed that we need to grow. And in every day in our lives, the choices that we make is seed that we have to, to, to grow. And in that powerful sermon that Jesus gave on the, on the mount, I believe every sermon that is preached from this pulpit is from the front room of heaven. But it's our choice to, to take it and to leave it here for next week. Or do we take it and we ask the Holy Spirit to come and change our lives forever? Now this year, uh, we heard a couple of messages about, um, about Jigt and bells and Jesus as our treasure. And all those wonderful messages we heard, did it make an impact in our life? It's again our choice. And, but we know that we serve a good, good Father, and He tells us to pray. And I just want to ask him, Pierre, maybe to, to pray us a well-known prayer. Uh, I hope you guys also know this well-known prayer. Or was this uh, when you left grade 12, you didn't do this prayer anymore? Onze Vader wat in die hemel is, laat die naam geheilig word. Laat die koninkrijk kom. Laat die wil geskiet soos in die hemel, net so ook op die aarde. Gee ons vandag ons dagelijkse brood. Vergewe ons ons skulde, soos ons ook ons skuldenaars vergewe. En lei ons nie versoeking nie, maar verlos ons van die bose, want aan u behoort die koninkrijk en die kracht en die heerlijkheid tot in eeuwigheid. Amen. Is that a goosebump prayer? And it was in the right language as well. Maybe, Brian, if you can join me as well. So, um, uh, uh, everybody, I didn't understand that prayer. Please go and study Afrikaans, because like we said, this is that Easter heavenly language. And uh, you have to understand that, because once you understand that prayer, you will have goosebumps. Praise the Lord. So maybe we've got an interpreter here. Our friends. Let's pray again. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. So prayer. We heard from Angus and Nadia that, that we need to ask, we need to seek, and we need to knock. And as Luke 11 in the Amplified Bible, just the, you know, the top writing on what is the passage about, it says the instruction about prayer. It happened that while Jesus was praying in a certain place after the, he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. In the background of Luke 11 and Matthew 7, it's all about prayer where Jesus Christ, where the disciples came to, to Jesus and asked him, please teach us how to pray. It goes on like John prayed, um, taught these disciples. So we got a role, and wherever we find ourselves, if you think you're a leader or not, if you think you're not worthy to be a leader, if the Holy Spirit lives in you, you are worthy. You are anointed. You've got a role to play in the body of Christ. All of us need to, to draw to the Father and every day ask Him, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to, to, to live in Your will. Teach us Your goodness and Your pleasing and Your perfect will for my life. And as we go on and we, 
We follow the same way as the disciples did in asking God to, to teach them. We can, we can go and confirm in Matthew 7, verse 7 again, as the Lord said, ask and ask so that we can be transformed. If on Tuesday in our Connect group, we, we just looked again on that it is instruction. It is a must. The Lord didn't ask you, please pray every month. He instructed us to pray. So we need to live in that instruction. And if you don't believe me, come and join us for our Connect groups every Sunday on the beach at 7 o'clock. And we can discuss, discuss if it's an a, um, instruction or not. So that was an invite, invitation to you to join us. So everything starts with prayer. If you look at all the big revivals that went through the ages, started with prayer. If you looked at, um, at um, all the victories that we, we look back in history, it was done through prayer. So everything in our life has to start in pr- with prayer. So let's ask the Lord to transform us. The only way we can ask Him is to, to lay ourselves down and pray that the Lord can come and change us. And maybe uh, be ready today. I've got a mic, a spare mic. So maybe I'm going to ask you for a testimony, or maybe I'm going to ask you to come and read something, or maybe what is prayer. So be ready. Why should we be ready? The Lord taught us now we should be ready in and out of, the se- out of season. Because so maybe I'm not going to ask you today to give a testimony or to pray or, or, or do something on stage, but maybe it's going to be required for you to be ready to give a testimony at work. Will you be ready to give that testimony? We need to be ready to pray for somebody. So be ready wherever you are. Maybe you're on. Come and give us a testimony. About uh, On Tuesday morning, we had a, a prayer session in the chapel, and um, just before we left, Johan had a, uh, gave us a, a vision or, or some history and a testimony what the Lord laid in his heart. Yes, I think, I think this is the season, in and out of season, but this is the in-season moment um, for prayer for transformation in our community. Um, in the very early 70s, my wife needs to help me when it was, I'm not clear when, uh, we had Auntie Smook come and, test, uh, come and visit us a couple of months ago to prepare for this year's worth of celebration. She told us the story that they had a, a, um, a tent set up roughly where the white churches in the early 70s and all the congregate, all the different denominations of Benoni came together here uh, for a number of, it was here, so, sorry, the, church, the, the tent was here. Um, all the different denominations of Benoni came together for a series of sermon, uh, sermons and, and celebrations over a couple of days on these grounds where our church is built now. Um, and a, a, it was led by a guy from Nederland that came here distinctly with a purpose of transforming and, and facilitating the transformation away from these den- denominational ideas where we can't cooperate with our own brothers in Christ um, just because they have a slightly way, different way of doing things than we have. Um, but during this time, there was a second tent set up for prayer before these services. And that tent was set up exactly, exactly where our chapel is standing. So there's been a preparation for that spot to be a prayer for transformation for 50 years about, roughly 50 years now. Um, It might be a few years less, but it's in the vicinity of 50 years. And while she was telling us this, I believe God showed me that that preparation that was done back then continues now, and the transformation that is happening and that we're praying for now is for our community to be transformed in the 70s, the transformation was away from de- denominational, denominational divisions to being one in Christ. We, we have to be first Christian before we AFM, before we are full gospel, before we are Methodist. you first in Christ. Then those other things can be secondary labels or that you apply to yourself. The transformation that is happening at the moment and that we're praying for right now is much more important in our nation than that, and I believe this is the transformation for Benoni for the next couple of years, is that our communities will be first Christ communities, then white, then black, then Indian, but we will be first Christian. And in this spot, I don't know if you've noticed, but 
this church doesn't look the way it looked in the 70s. In the 70s was a lot more pale, a lot more people that looked like me, a lot fewer people that didn't look like me. And now this, this congregation is very, very diverse. And this is what God is using us for, to transform Benoni. We are going to be Christ-centered first, and then all the other labels. But we're going to, yeah, Christ to glory. Glory to Christ. Thank you. We as the chosen, elected light bearers of God, what did the Lord plant in your heart, St. January, to be transformed? Because we can see the fruit and the, the, the word of God is always the same and it will be fulfilled at the right time. So no matter, no, no matter what, how small you think, you think your vision is, your goal is, keep on taking that torch and running with it. Because the Lord will light it and make this big bonfire. Just keep on, on that vision and your plan. Keep on praying to God. And in the second part, uh, Nadia and Angus left with us was was to seek. Now, in your life, who do you seek to? Why do you seek? Everybody will say, yeah, but if you seek, you know, it's God. Let me just close your eyes and just picture in your mind. Everybody can just close their eyes and, and just spend a couple of seconds with the Holy Spirit that lives inside you. Okay, think out of the box. What do, you, what do you see when you say, I'm seeking God? Now, who is God to you? And in this moment, I want to make it real to you again. That you seeking, is it your king? Is it your father, the good, good father? Who are you seeking? Do you see your friend? Do you see your savior? Who is your God? Because we don't serve a superficial God you don't serve somebody else's God, you see, serve your God. But who is that to you? I want to challenge you to make it real today so that you understand that the Holy Spirit is God. In this passage, especially when we read on more in, in Luke, in Luke 14 to 16, it's talking about Jesus telling his disciples that he'll leave the Holy Spirit for them. So is the Holy Spirit your God? Or do you just hold on to Jesus, your Savior? Thank you very much. You can just open our eyes. And, and Jeremiah 33, verse 3. I plug eindelijk iemand with other means as a color. So if you want to know what that means, go and ask him Pierre after the service. I plug now with other means as a color. This is actually Charlene's verse. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. So if we start seeking God, in James we also see, for verse 8, we, we read that if you draw close to me, I will draw close to you. So once we start praying and then start seeking, we will experience God. We will have testimonies about the goodness of God. And uh, Pastor Basil's video clips is going to be filled up quickly. So when we start praying and, and, and seeking, you better put your name on that list quickly because that list is going to be filled up very quickly. So please um, get your name on that list. And one, uh, another thing that we saw here was in, in Proverbs 1 verse 7 it says, The fear of the, the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. But a passage in, in, in Luke and Matthew, it's, it's about totally different. It's not about the, the reverence of God. I always want to say it's in the in reverence of God in that passage. Because it's talking about we've got a king, God is our king. And he will, is our judge. And he is Lord. And he will always be Lord and judge. And, but he will always be our savior as well. And through Jesus Christ dying for you on the cross, you can go to your father as a child of your father. Now this Matthew 7 and Luke 11 is talking about you are allowed to go to your father with, I want to say with a nagging in brackets, as like a child go to his father, if I want the sweet, I want the sweet, I want the sweet. So you can, because the freedom in that we have in Jesus Christ, that he died for, died for you. So we can go with a boldness, we can go shamelessly to God, because what Jesus did for us. So we heard this morning that we can go to our father shamelessly. So let's go to him again and again. 
Let's go to our Father of um, persistence so that we can carry on and seeking Him in our everyday lives. In that seeking still, is it the pastor's responsibility to go and seek the will of God? Yes, it is. You need to go and seek the will of God. But so is it your responsibility. It's your responsibility to go to God. We're not living in Moses' time. By God's grace, we're living in the New Testament where Jesus Christ made a way for us to go up the mountain. Jesus Christ made a way for you to go to the mountain. It's for you to go and hear from God directly. All of us, is, there's different steps. And with the, the church like we have to set up now today to hear the word of God, it's got an awesome place, but there's only one pillar. It's your responsibility to go up the mountain because the price that Jesus Christ paid for you is worth it to go to the mountain. Go and experience Him in a new, different way. And then, the last thing I want to talk about is it's knocking. And knocking is it's an, active, it's an active word. Maybe, Neil, just sit and knock on the door there, please. Sit and knock on the door there, please, please. Okay, yo. Uh, yo, yeah, go and knock then, like that. Everybody look at Neil, that's it. If we keep on sitting and knocking, sometimes it will be hard work to get to the door and knock. So sometimes we need to be active. And we heard a, a message pastor, Oliver preached the other day with um, bells. Can everybody remember what is bells? I've got a mic. Who wants, who wants to try? Everybody raise your right hand if anyone wants to try. Do you want to try? Okay. So it was bless, eat, listen, learn, and send. So, do we show generosity? Who ate with somebody in the church the last month? Just see your hands. That's it. If not, you're not obedient. So be obedient and go and eat with somebody in church. Deal. What did Pastor Bongani preach about? What, what did Pastor Bongani preach about? Pastor Bongani was obedience. So go and eat with somebody. Thank you very much. What did Pastor Lawrence preach about? Treasure. That Jesus is our treasure. So let's look after him. So all these messages, and then the first one was uh, jigged. What is that? No, it's Afrikaans. It's jigged. Um, <laughs> it's, it's jip. Who wants to say jip? Yeah, not, no, I'm not Jeb. <laughs> no, I don't know. Egyptian. 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 What does it mean? Um, to be, to be, uh, to be robbed. robbed. Yeah, robbed. to be robbed or wronged. Yeah. So if you were robbed and wrong, you were set free with your Egypt. Why did you take it back? If you took it back. I hope not. Leave it. Be transformed. Transformation is a 180 degree turnaround. Don't turn 180 again, only once. All right, so leave your jib stuff behind. But all of these messages and, and, and key word, words that we, we, we heard, we need to live it. We need to, li- need to live vows. Go and be a blessing to somebody this week. Choose to be a blessing. blessing. Choose to be hospital. hospital. Choose to eat with somebody this next week. It's your choice. You've got a choice. Go and spend time with God. Go and listen to Him so that He can lead you. Otherwise, you're going to be transformed to what? We want it to be transformed to His good and pleasing and perfect will. That's where we want to end up. So let's learn about how to be Christ-like and understand that we are sent. Who is sent here? So all of us are sent. So let's go and live that and make it practical. Maybe in that on a couple of more things. Maybe Adele, can you come up? Shalene, can you come up? Uh, Josh, can you come up? Jules, can you come up quickly, please? And uh, in, in our lives, we need to be transformed, but we all need to be one body according to God's pleasing will. And maybe in your life, can you just tell us about we ask God something. Where did he, he um, did you seek him and, and how did you knock in the, in the testimony of, in your life? Um, yeah, so 
Um, my journey actually started last year, November, um, when I did the, my first marathon, oh, not my first marathon, but I did the Soweto Marathon, which was horrible. I did it in six and a half hours. Um, so then in January, we normally fast because just to give our the year for the Lord. And um, we did the Daniel fast, but um, after 21 days, I felt that I still want to um, fast some more and ask the Lord to help me with the next marathon, which was yesterday. And um, yeah, and I kept on seeking him and asking him to help me with it and to get through it and to qualify for comrades. And so in order to qualify for comrades, we need to run four hours, 59 minutes and... Uh, yeah, 49 minutes and 59 seconds and yeah so um, we ran yesterday and I qualified um, 4 hours 44 uh, so for since we started Benoni House of Prayer we've really tried to reach out to other leaders within our community and in the first year and a half, we really struggled to sit down with people and explain the vision and that we wanted the, the Benoni House of Prayer to serve the whole community and not just the house of the Lord. And at the beginning of this year, God just started opening doors for me to go have appointments with people. And so far, I've met with about 11 church leaders across the city that are incredible, ex incredibly excited about starting a, a united prayer movement. And um, so one of the ladies that's been very supportive has been Natasha from the White House. And so she, they hosted a prayer walk at the beginning of February, and it was raining terribly, and we really couldn't walk and pray. But we decided just to pray in the place where we were. And Angus was there, and Hannes and Harriet were there, and I was there, and a couple of people from their ministry was also there. And it was so incredible to pray with Christians that I don't know. <laughs> Because, you know, when you pray with Christians that you do know, you kind of know their vibe. You know they, how they're going to pray and whatever it is. And just to pray with Christians that, that you don't know. You don't know their stuff. You don't know anything about them. <laughs> it was incredible. And at the end of the prayer meeting, we prayed, for, prayed and worshipped for about two hours. And we prayed for specific things, prayed specific scriptures over the city. And at the end of the meeting, we just chatted, hi, who are you? And whatever. And then was just started sharing a little bit of what we experienced during the prayer meeting. And three of us had exactly the same vision. We were singing a song called um, New Wine. And there's a, a part of the song where it says, I lay down my old flame to carry your new fire again. And, or to carry your new fire today. And three of us that don't know each other from a bar of soap saw this massive like bowl. You know those bowls at the Olympics where they throw the, the torch in and it just does that. And we each had a different perspective on the bowl, um, but the perspective that, that I had was a whole bunch of hands kind of pushing this thing up, like bearing the weight of it, but, you know, pushing it up to hold it up in the air. And one of the other ladies had a vision of this bowl like falling down from heaven onto the Benoni Plaza and the fire just going everywhere. And I, I forget what, what the third lady was saying. But I just want to encourage you, pray with other Christians. Pray with other Christians because God is doing something in prayer in our city and you don't want to miss out on it. There's been generations of people prayers like my grandparents and my father and mother that have prayed for this city. And we are in that last push now to push through into the things that God is wanting to do. If we don't do our part, everything that they've done is, runs the risk of going to waste. But we coming in at the last hour of the day, like that parable where Jesus says, they've been, borne the brunt of the work in the heat of the day. <laughs> We're coming in at the last hour and we get to see what they labored for in prayer. So just join us. Pray, pray for praying for our city. Amen. Um, so in 3D we do the, this concept of we don't fundraise, we faith raise. And so we were trusting God for um, 
finances for one of the students. Um, but it just became a, a holistic trust thing. And we did the teacher's dedication service last year. And as we were praying as staff, yeah, it was just, yeah, I just broke down and felt it heavily on my heart to do this marathon. And I was scared to even put it out there because when you put something out, it's real. Then people start knowing, so when are you doing that? And the planning needed to come into play. So it was finances. Um, when I would do a 21, after 15 Ks, my knee would start like hurting badly. So I remember um, my first 21 was in Pretoria and yo, I, God, yeah, I finished. But it was tough. So I had weak knees. I was, I was wrestling with God. Like, you know the state of my body. You know, I have the desire for this. But after 15 Ks, I, I'm done. And um, I've asked for support financially. God gave me people to help me with um, training, training plans, Denise, um, Pastor Chids, Jules, the students, everyone around me cheering me on. And it was tough on the day of the race because now all of these things came into play. I lost Charlene and the group um, at 22 kilometers and I felt alone. I was with strangers. I was, you know, I was like, yo, what happens now? They ran out of water in the stations. I don't drink Coke um, when I run. So they ran out of water. So I'm just like, yo. And as they ran out of water, I met the guys from the church. Yeah, hey, George. And then I was like, water, 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 please. So I had water there. So there was provision throughout. But this is a scripture in the, um, what you call this, CPT? The Passion Translation, yes. So above all, constantly chase after the realm of God's kingdom and the righteousness that proceeds from him, then all these less important things will be given to you abundantly. So God being led by Pastor Gideon consistently, he would say, we're not just running, we're running for Jesus. So we were doing ministry while we were running. And in the ask, seek and knock, I felt like when the less, in a sense, important things, the finances, the body and the pain, that became less and he became more. And I feel like I finished because of just my attention being shifted from the outcome, but more, how can I be your vessel, Jesus, as we run through this race and we conquered? Amen. Amen. I think in 2012, when I was a student at 3D Academy, Pastor Oliver did community impact sessions with us where we would go into Benoni, we would either pick up uh, papers, we would scrape down the posters of witchcraft and all these um, medicine. And the way that we were taught and explained is we do a spiritual activation where we clean or tear down something in the physical and God uses that in the spiritual to break the strongholds that we do. And one of the sessions he took us to the Benoni Plaza and it, it was just the mess and it was just the dump. And I fast forward to 2018, um, and as 3D staff, we went through the book of Nehemiah, where God speaks to Nehemiah about the temple and the ruin. And we went through that process, and in the time, we went back to the plaza again, and we continually clean up and pick up there. And we've been asking God to change and transform. And I don't know if you followed the Benoni City Times, the, the City Times did a... They did a display of Benoni, where it all began, somewhere last year or 2018. And it started with all the schools and what it used to look like, the industries, how the mines start. And then this one week, they did the plaza. And I, for the first time, I saw what the plaza looked like. And I was like, Lord, is this what it was? And as I... I, I started crying because my heart broke as to where it looks now. And he said to me, I will restore it to its former glory. I'm like, until this time, I'm praying. But more and more people started taking on in the plaza. More and more people started organizations, whether it be Christians, whether it be churches. We went in and we give out soup at the plaza we went in and there's cleanup and last week at the 
just the clean my Benoni, we were at the plaza, and it was just, it was a celebration where the people that wants to see the change was putting in their hands, were active working, but in a way, they started getting the squatters in to come clean up the space, and then we're filling plastic bags, and just actively everyone working together in the community. And a week before that, in a life group, the guys that started, we read a book of the Bible every two weeks. They said, let's read the book of Nehemiah <laughs> for that week. And God just said, Jules, it's coming. So I started getting involved with a lot of the, the marital things and the things around the Benoni. And someone said to me, the restoration of the plaza has been approved. They, they've started with Germiston. The Kuruleni, city of Ikuruleni has approved the restoration of the plaza. And a lot of stuff in the city they're doing strategically. They started with the pavements all along the roads. And it's going to end up at the plaza. And it's not where God has promised me to, it will be or to its former glory. But it started. Amen. Thank you very much, guys. I want to close off, uh, almost close off with uh, Luke 11, verse 9 to 10. Say, I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened for. Maybe, Rafe, you're the last person I want to ask something, and it's a complete surprise again, but Rafe, can you join us here for a quick one? And um, if in that passage you can clearly see, we need to ask, we need to seek, and we need to knock, and that who ask will receive, and that all this, um, and, and this is for everyone, if you look at him, um, Verse uh, 10, for, this is for everyone. I learned that a lot of people on stage here today, and from this thought that we just heard now, you can do a, a, a full sermon and everything, because all the testimonies of here today is like, whoa, wow, wow. So I'm going to leave with you, keep on asking, keep on seeking, and keep on praying. And um, in fusion, we visit God's story, and... Uh, Something major that we learned that, uh, uh, in the story of um, um, Abel and them. What was, what was that? Something major that you learned in that? Cain was not Abel. Yeah, thank you very much. So, um, Adele, uh, can you maybe come up? Sorry, please. With the song and then. Luke eleven thirteen. If you then. Uh, uh, I believe. You are evil, uh, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father in heaven give this good gifts to you? And that Holy Spirit, those who ask. Now, I just want to focus on that last part. To those who ask, the Holy Spirit will be given to you. And we've got a choice to ask or not. We've got a choice to, we heard so much testimonies and people on stage and the word of God and we need to transform and where, you know, where must I get involved? And, and, but there's so many places. If, if you go out on the board on the left-hand side, there's a slideshow with all the connect groups and in the connect groups you've got all the names and telephone numbers there. If you want to be joining in a connect group, because one of, that's one of the keys that just to have a relationship with God Sunday for an hour and a half, and God's plan for you. God wants you to be transformed 24-7. And being transformed, we've got testimonies like we saw today. Because all of us, if I look at so many people here, Ben, Winston, Ashla, everybody, Martin, uh, there's so many people here, Darren, everybody has got a special testimony. Because, yeah, it, it's... it's Votary, all of us get a testimony where we choose to be transformed. And today there's an opportunity for all of us again to invite the Holy Spirit because we're not able. Kind weren't able, but we're not able as well. But by God's grace, we can ask for the Holy Spirit. If you go and read uh, Matthew 7 verse 8, 
The promises that's in there in the Word of God is for you. Promises that it will be opened for you. But you need to make a choice to pray or to ask, to see God, and then keep on knocking. Make it practical. Leave the chair behind. Stand up and go and knock. Stand up and make a choice to come join us in the connect group. Be opus 24-7. So all of us got time. There's no excuse. If you break your leg, you're going to go and see a doctor. All of us is broken. All of us is sinners. All of us need the Holy Spirit. Make time to get to be up. Make time to join in cleaning Benoni. Make time to, to go to inner city. Because it's areas there where the Lord wants to use you. He gave you a light, but what are you doing with it? You're taking that light and put a bucket over it. It's not shining. But we're not able. We can't do it. So let's ask. Maybe everyone will understand with me just to, as we're going to praise and worship this song, and then we're just going to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to come into my life, in my area, so that I can be transformed and be transformed forever. He's here today. Say, Holy Spirit, I need you because I'm not able to be transformed. All my choices is failing. I can't be transformed. I'm not able. I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. And I know we're not good enough. I know we're sinners and we don't deserve death. But praise the Lord Jesus, our Savior, that He made a way for us, that we are worthy, that we are good enough, that we can live in victory through Him. But we've got a role to play as well. We, we need to choose God and we need to, to pray and ask the Lord, firstly for the Holy Spirit, and then and that our choices will be to go and seek Him and understand who we're seeking. And we make a choice that to, to knock and make it active, to get out of the comfort zone. Stop using the excuse, there is no time. There is time. Take authority in your life so that you can understand God's pleasing and perfect will. Lay down the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of man. Lay it down. Leave it behind. And I ask the Lord, just in closing, right here, right now, Holy Spirit, come and transform me. Because I need you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for changing me forever. In Jesus' name, amen.